Kanabar joins us now. Uh, Mr. Kanabar, these are exactly the, the questions that we were asking last night, and now the government has clarified. Uh, what do you make of the penalty amount? So, as I uh, was telling you yesterday, and there is no inconsistency which I see, I, I did hear a counterpoint of you, uh, which I must say I never agreed with, that this is a, a voluntary disclosure scheme. It isn't really. Uh, I mentioned to you yesterday, and I would just repeat that, when you deposit monies into a bank, you will need to substantiate that this happens to be something which you have drawn otherwise or it is out of income which you have earned. And unless you are able to substantiate that, the amount will be treated as tax evasion. It cannot be treated as income of the current year for a very simple reason, that you just had a voluntary disclosure scheme where people paid about 45% tax, and now you cannot have within a yeah. couple of months thereafter people paying 30% tax. What I cannot understand mm. and agree with is... But 200%? Uh, uh, so, uh, for evasion of tax, Shireen, uh, India is one of those countries which levies a penalty of between 100 and 300 percent. So that, that, that's provided in, okay. under the Income Tax Act itself, that if there is a concealment of income detected by the tax office, mm -hmm. then a penalty of between 100 and 300 percent can be levied by the tax office. And last year, the law got amended to say that instead of 100 to 300, it will be a standard 200 percent. So it is just simply a, what I cannot agree is that merely because an amount is more than 10 lakhs, there should be a presumption of an evasion. Mm. It is up to an SSE to prove. Mm. Somebody may have withdrawn cash for paying salary, for example, and a crore of rupees lying as salary yeah. payment. I simply redeposit it. And so long as you can explain, there can't be a presumption. But clearly the position in law mm. is that if you deposit monies into a bank account and you are unable to explain to the satisfaction of the tax office that it does not constitute evasion, mm it would be liable to a penalty of 200%. Yes, uh, you know, I, I'm just trying to look at the press release. It very categorically states that the deposits above 10 lakh rupees will be treated as the case of tax evasion, though it also says that the IT department will match this with the IT returns filed by the depositors and suitable action may follow. So you believe that that is the one area uh, of concern, but uh, in principle you agree with the decision uh, and you believe that this is in fact consistent with what the government intends to do? Absolutely. So let us assume that somebody uh, has got huge unaccounted cash and goes and deposits. A person cannot say that that money is income which I have earned in the current year and I'm going to pay 30% tax. Because you had people making a declaration and paying 45% tax and you cannot now go and say, I did not avail of that opportunity, but I will simply pay a 30% tax. And therefore, the avowed intention of the government is to say, prove your source. And if you are unable to prove your source, it will be treated as undisclosed income, unaccounted income, and you pay a 200% penalty. What I cannot agree mm. is a presumption that if it is more than 10 lakhs, it will be presumed to be unaccounted. I don't think that that is consistent, and I don't think that is something which will stand up in a court of law. Okay, let me also bring in a, another voice here. Sandeep Parikh of FinSec Law Advisors joins us. Sandeep, this was the fine print that we were waiting for, and now the government has issued that clarification, a tax penalty of 200% on undisclosed income. And the government, uh, at least if you go by what the tweet suggests by the Revenue Secretary, uh, go the government will presume it to be unaccounted income in a case of tax evasion if the deposit is above 10 lakh rupees. What do you make of it? Actually. Uh, so, you see, essentially the word presumption is kind of well understood by lawyers. And typically all presumptions are rebuttable presumptions, which means that uh, something is considered to be X unless uh, facts prove otherwise. So this seems to be a case of that. So uh, if it's over 10 lakhs, if it's a crore in the example the gentleman gave before, um, I, you can easily rebut it by saying that you had, in fact, withdrawn this on so and so date, and you're just redepositing it back because of uh, so and so reason. So uh, it may not be as uh, you know unconstitutional as it sounds, um, because I think ultimately it's going to be a rebuttable presumption. It's, it's more of a red flag rather than a kind of a deeming irrebuttable presumption, as uh, you lawyers call it. Uh, overall, what do you make of the fine print now, now that the government clarification is in, Sandeep? I, I think it uh, seems to be reason, quite reasonable in terms of uh, 
exempting uh, uh, small smaller amounts, uh, kind of putting a red flag over large transactions. And if somebody's got 10 crores, obviously they they're not going to get away uh, by just uh, disclosing it uh, and paying 30 percent tax. I think it uh, seems some, seems to be kind of a good workable solution. I just hope they have the bandwidth to handle. Uh, you know, you're looking at 16 lakh crores. So even if you know 60 or 70 percent of that comes back into the banking system, um, we're looking at pretty you know large, very very high bandwidth for both for banks and for the tax authorities. Right? Well, uh, Sandeep and Mr. Kanabar, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18 with your quick reaction to the clarification that's come in there from the government on the black money uh, crackdown or the demonetization scheme that was announced last night. 